days are cooler, nights are warmer, and I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you, right at you, you give me something to believe in, just what I need in. Most important thing to remember and cannot be publicized in the press or made the subject of public speeches. Our Negro population is growing by leaps and bounds. They stay right in the city limits and grow by taking more white territory inside Atlanta. Our migration is good white homeowning citizens. With the federal government insisting on political recognition of Negroes in local affairs, the time is not far distant when they will become a potent political force in Atlanta if our white citizens are just going to move out and give it to them. This is not intended to stir race prejudice because all of us want to deal fairly with them, but do you want to hand them political control of Atlanta, either as a majority or a powerful minority vote? William B. Hartsfield, 1943. Thirty years later, Maynard Jackson became the first black mayor of Atlanta and every mayor since then has been black. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we are here. This Wellness Wednesday. We're going to finish the show with a different kind of wellness. Uh, wellness that steeps you in your own power and your own knowledge of self and your own understanding of what that power can wield. And it's not against anybody, but it's about self-determination. Uh, that was uh, a clip from um, TikTok or one of those things where they quoted Mayor uh, William B. Hartsfield, who was mayor of Atlanta from 1937 to 41. And in 1942 to 1961 and he was saying to the white folk the good white folk don't don't let these black people come in here and buy a property and forge businesses and gain power because we will never get it back and they have not gotten it back maynard jackson after him never looked back and he was right and that's the fear that that, that koa Beatty talks about yeah absolutely. that's the fear the fear of losing something that you have held on to for so long but you know it's like parents whose children grow up and then leave the nest mm -hmm. it's like it's like people who have transitioned from one business to another if you've gotten fired or whatever and you you go out and you find a new thing pivot Pivot doesn't mean anything's taken away from you. It just means things have changed and they have changed. And no longer are people stepping off of curbs and saying, yes, um, and while they're codifying these laws to try to bring all of this back, it's we're going still back. here. We still have power. So Dr. Karita Mitchell's here as well as Wellness Wednesday on the Karen Hunter Show. Um, yesterday, I played a clip from John Hope Ryan, who basically said the same thing. I need us to root and ground ourselves in the knowledge that this is over. This this thing that we're seeing play out from the fearless fund being, you mm -hmm, know, hit mm -hmm. with these lawsuits, affirmative action, all that. This is telling you that they are deathly afraid that they have no longer any power. So they're going to grab it by any means necessary, even if they have to put a degenerate like Donald Trump back in office. But right. it's over. Yeah. Don't believe the hype. It's over. Don't believe the hype. You know, I mean, it, it was, there's a saying in the Bible where there's no vision of people will perish. And I feel like. Somebody's always trying to give the vision. Someone's always trying to control the narrative. That's giving you what you focus on. And that vision will make us perish. But if we listen to what you're saying, Karen, which I 100% believe, we as humanity always tend towards progress. Caveman's to where we are now. You can get your cell phone and talk to somebody pause, and pause, see them. Pause, pause, pause. We were never in the cave. <laughs> right, right, right. There right. were no caves in Africa. Right, come on now. Out. We ain't not going to Yeah, let's talk to the real some, truth. First some was peoples, out. Yes. First peoples. Pangea. Yeah, exactly. Folk migrated, went, and it was cold. That's they true. went to caves to protect themselves from the elements. We were always with the sun. That's it. That's it. Sorry. Children of the sun. Yes. Absolutely. And if you shave a monkey, it's white. All right. I mean, uh -oh. but the That's thing true. that I have to say what? is Who's that calling? there is no. Whose phone is ringing? Whose phone? Is it you? It's you. Stop it. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. That's all right. <laughs> Actually, that's Laundry okay. delivery. Right. That's okay. Dr. Mitchell, what, you want to say something? Uh, yes. The only thing I was going to say is that, you know, 
I definitely agree that we have to have our own vision and we're working toward it. And that's the reason why I'm so invested in working deliberately and proactively toward decency. Yeah. And that people who consider themselves good and decent too often think that that means avoiding conflict or never being in conflict. And I need us to understand that in this moment, it has to be conflict because you have to proactively create this decency. But, you know, part of what everything we're seeing with the Fearless Fund and everything else brings up for me too, is that there really is in the American way, a perverse flex that basically says, yes, I'm going to be a hypocrite in your face. I'm going to hold you to standards that I would never uh, meet myself. And I'm still going to strip you of every right that I can in your face. And so to me, that's part of the reality of this moment too, is facing, um, if we believe it's a last gasp, which I do, that there's still a lot of um, ugliness and yeah. harm. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I said the most dangerous is a yeah. dangerous. Yeah. 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 dog is dangerous. You know? Yeah. Yes. Um, and and I'm, I brought up the monkey thing because they're all, all people are always, the race is always calling yeah, black people monkeys. monkeys. But when you shave a monkey, it's white. So right. stop. Stop with that. And they have thin lips. And they, like, I, I'm, I'm not calling. Oh, that's other what people. that reference Yeah, was. I'm not calling white people monkeys i'm saying that that when you when you use that trope it's stupid because <laughs> it doesn't exactly. it doesn't hold up nobody is a monkey but a monkey um so let's let's do that 866-801-TALK dr karita mitchell i'm gonna I'm a do that in a second smith but let's take jackson in north carolina first jackson is calling uh from north carolina welcome yeah i, I like that tiktok clip but here's the thing we okay. We get these black mayors every. I mean, every mayor has been black in Atlanta since Maynard Jackson. And I like Jackson. Jackson was one of the best mayors that are, they ever are had. Are you from Atlanta? No, I'm not from Atlanta. So, I, but here, oh I mean, what does it matter where I'm from? Because I'm, because I'm you you you're, you're talking about we're being specific right now. You're talking about a city you didn't live in, a mayor you didn't vote for, and a town that you really may not know anything about economically. Okay, but here's what I do know. Okay. What are, we, what are we in control of in Atlanta? We don't own a skyscraper in the sky. We don't even own a bank. We don't even own a, own a hotel. Is that true? So no, that's not it, true. Where is that cheating? That's actually not true. Um, and I do believe One United does have a, a branch both in Boston and Atlanta and in Miami and Florida and Los Angeles, South Central. So that's not true. Um, and most of the powers in Atlanta, it's all black. Everywhere is black. What I don't, but I, I feel like you, you're parroting a narrative, Jackson, that's not rooted in actual facts that you know, but in what you feel. Am I correct? No, well, who uh, the, the richest person in Atlanta is a white woman. Why is that? Um, because white people have been here for two hundred years in charge. I mean, excuse me, uh, four hundred years uh, in charge, and black people were in bondage for four hundred years. We've been free less than. I mean, how long have we been free? Less than one hundred and forty years, yeah, one hundred fifty years. Yeah, less. Um, and and out of the freedom came Jim Crow before that. So we've been free, free since the nineteen sixties, late sixties. Right. And still, to be able to be where we are, any of the three of us sitting in this room right now, would, could our ancestors, could my grandmother imagine this? Miracles, she couldn't yeah. vote, buy property or anything. So, Jackson, uh, give us a minute. All right, <laughs> we're coming. We're coming. What, what did Daniel Black say? Yeah, what did Daniel here Black they come, y'all. Here they come, y'all. Here they come, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I would like for you to listen to this clip by a man who was very wealthy one of our many, many silent multimillionaires, John Hope Bryant. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even going to talk about Robert Smith and all of the people that they parrot out because most of the millionaires are quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay, John Hope Bryant, let's play. We played it yesterday. Listen, listen, Jackson, and I'm not attacking you. I need you to do better. And I need, because words are so powerful. Words are so powerful. You are listening to Sirius XM, Urban View, Channel 126. People pay for radio. And there's a whole bunch of, I'm out there in the streets, reluctantly, but I'm out there. And we show up and we don't look like what we're supposed to look like. We got aerospace engineers, mm -hmm. a part of this family, and not just the PhDs, the, dr the bus drivers, the truck drivers, and all of those collectives who are doing their part, right? And I'm not going to diminish that because we show up. Yeah. For ourselves, we we do rock like a unit. We vote like a block, Absolute. you know, so yeah, so absolutely. like I'm not going to let the narrative overtake, you know, what we feel and the high mm. crime. And if you're from Detroit or whatever, Anchorage, Alaska 
has more crime than Detroit and Chicago put together, but we don't ever talk about that. Wow. The poorest counties in the country are 99 to 95, 95 to 99 percent, the five poorest counties, white. Wow. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about the majority of people on welfare are white. This should be the conversation that we're having because they're suffering. Narrative. Who controls the narrative? And there's been so many lies that they've even polluted our own minds as people of color that we don't really see the truth a lot of the times. It's been strategic. And yeah. even though on this show we talk empowerment of black people because it, there's a de deficit in confidence. There's a deficit in self-esteem that was fomented for 400 years exactly. on plantations throughout this country. I'm a double down on that. The reality is all of the tools and the weapons that we provide every day on Urban View are for everybody, which the folk that are, don't have melanin who listen to this show religiously not to troll can attest to. Their yeah. lives have been impacted too. Why? Yeah. Because we want everyone to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for a, a person to get on Jim Rome and talk about, I'm going to be president of all, we all want everybody to be okay. Ain't nobody in here racist. You sat, you sat there and saw the man kiss me on my cheek today. Oh, yeah. On both cheeks. Oh, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And everybody in the hallways who don't look like me. Yeah. Why? Because I treat everybody with the same respect and dignity because everyone's worthy of that. Right. That's mm -hmm. what love looks like. So, no, we got to change our language we have to change the words that we espouse because it's important that Absolutely. we set the table let's play john hope bryant really quickly black people are too emotional on this topic and some white people are too narrow-minded and fearful by the way none of my comments are racial this is just the math okay so now let's deal with diversity and inclusion what's the biggest economy in the world i've already said it the u.s what's the most diverse country in the world the u.s what are the two most diverse states? California and New, New York. York. Mm -hmm. What's the two most prosperous states? California mm -hmm. and New York. What's the biggest economy in the South? Atlanta. Mm -hmm. $455 billion a year. Tenth largest economy in the United States. What's the most diverse place in the traditional South? Atlanta. Atlanta. You take six states around Atlanta. States, not cities. You can name them. Alabama, Mississippi, like you can name them. Atlanta city economy is bigger than all six states. You can take three of those states together, put them inside a bucket, and sit it inside of the city of Atlanta's economy. That's because diversity is actually good business. If you are a business today, a company, a Fortune 500 company, you're 36 more likely to be prosperous and profitable if you're diverse and inclusive. Love that. That is so good. And that's black leadership. That's so That makes good. sure that the people that work on the buildings, you know, when Maynard Jackson came in, the government contracts, he wanted them to be 50% to go to black people. And then he realized there weren't enough black contractors to do it. So then he developed programs to make sure that there were enough black contractors to then take the, the, the money that comes in from the federal government to build the airports and place. We have to be proactive and everyone has to be included, but we also have to watch our mouths and how we talk about each other and ourselves. So we don't know what's true often anymore because there's so many lies and that when you that's truth to power again. Facts. This is what's real. Diversity pays off. Diversity works. Diversity builds a better country. My days are cooler. Nights are warmer. And I put the blame on you. Time moves slow. But my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you. Right at you You give me something to believe in Just what I needed You're the closest